Hey folks, it's time for some more quarantine drinking with GDP and the pig. I'm GDP and this is my pig. And tonight's wine is Barolo. What a surprise. 1982 Francesco Rinaldi Barolo. Uh, as many of you might know, I'm not a huge fan of buying older Barolo. And for me, I guess older Barolo is 85 and earlier. Um, 85 because it's a vintage that really is, is going past peak. But in general, the vintages older than that the, the risk reward ratio is not high enough for me. There's just too many bottles that underperform, so I have to buy two or three bottles of a specific wine to get that really great bottle. So the price is double or triple what it seems to be. There are some exceptions. There are some wines I just love and will, will, will pursue, uh, but there are producers like Francesco Rinaldi who have been so consistent over the years for me that I never hesitate in buying most of their old vintages. If you go back probably before 71, then I'd get a little, it's a little dicey then for various reasons. But up to the 71, uh, I have no real qualms in buying these wines. Also because they're priced very well. There's a great quality price ratio uh, in Francesco Rinaldi wines, both today and in the past. Um, the wines are made in a very similar fashion. They're very traditional wines still to this day. Uh, this Barolo uh, was produced primarily from probably a little bit of Canubi, uh, a little bit of, I don't know if they had Boiolo, they have Boiolo and Rocca della Nunziata in today's blend, they have Sarmasa in Vignana in, and Codana all in the blend, the base Barolo blend today. They produced Barolo, Barolo Canubi, Barolo Brunate and Barolo Canubi Reserva. Back then they just produced uh, Barolo Brunate, Barolo Base, and maybe some Barolo Canubi for the Cavaliere del Tartufo bottling. Uh, in, in, in 1982, back until fairly recently, in fact, until about a decade ago, the wines like this would have been aged in uh, huge barrels, 80 hectoliters, 100, 110 hectoliters. Today, they're aged in 50 hectoliter barrels in general. Um, but still, these wines are uh, uh, unforgiving. They, they, the, the producers, uh, the, the Francesco Rinaldi production team doesn't care if you like their wine. They make it for themselves. They, they make a historic wine, in my estimation. It's a wine with no shits are given. This is what Barolo should be. This is what it's going to be like. You'll have to wait to enjoy it. I take a lot of pride in their wine, and I think that shows even in the corks they used in 1982. This is the cork from my wine tonight. It's absolutely beautiful. It's still very pliant. It's a fairly long cork for 82, and that might help contribute to the, it certainly contributes to the quality in the bottle, it might help contribute to the consistency that Francesco Rinaldi has shown over the years. Now, uh, this 82 was a great vintage. It's uh, a vintage of a different era. The wines were more rustic. Uh, th this is the first vintage of the modern era where producers actually started making some money that allowed them to reinvest in their properties. And I think you see the qualitative increases begin in about 88, 89, 90, the trio of great vintages where investments in the winery really started to pay off. So what do we have here? Well, to start with, I double decanted this wine over three hours ago, four hours, almost four hours now. And that's my protocol with Old Barolo for two reasons. One, is a very fine sediment, which if it gets stirred up in the wine, can lend a muddy, dirty flavor to the wine, which nobody wants. And number two, these wines need air. They spend years in large oak barrels and then years in these bottles, and they really want to stretch and unwind. And when I poured this wine, it had the Classic old, old Barolo, old wine nose, musty, little dank. Uh, palate was attenuated, high in acid, not very much flesh. This still is going to take about two hours to open up, but right now, it still has a little celery seed, a little bouillon cube. It's showing its age. It's a, it's at the end of its the plateau of maturity. It'll probably stop dropping off soon. But there's also dried rose petals. There's a little bit of tar. There's a lots of Middle Eastern spices. <clears throat> cardamom, fenugreek, and dried cherry fruit. In the mouth, it's still moderately tannic. It's 37 years old. It's still moderately tannic. Great acids, cleanse the mouth, beautiful length, inner mouth perfume, lots of cherry fruit, surprisingly fruity. And classic impact of tar, on the back end, which gains a spiciness through the finish. It's a beautiful wine, it's well proportioned, needs another two hours of air. For me, it's at its peak. This is the way I like Barolo. 
old, elegant, stately, and important. Uh, it, it is a wine I'm gonna serve tonight with some pasta and some uh, pork scallopini, which will be a fantastic match. Uh, but as I said, it's not super expensive, so if you wanna start to get into old Barolo, my highest recommendation is the wines of Francesca Rinaldi. And they should be in everybody's cellar today as well. They're going, the new wines will age, maybe not quite as long as these, these old wines, but they'll age beautifully as well. So on that note, cheers, my friend. Arrivederci. And I'll see you again on another episode of GDP and the Pig.